Hey, you. Yeah, you. Get up. Show these fine viewers how you made this here table. Now get out of here. All right, now let's get started. The cinder block portion of this is as easy as it gets. It's as simple as just slapping some paint on these things and it's done. I'm not gonna use any adhesive to attach these cinder blocks together because this thing would be so heavy if it was one piece that I would never be able to move it. I'm gonna be using some regular old exterior paint, the same paint that I did the two benches you see here in the background. And it's as simple as just painting the outsides. I'm not even going to paint the entire cinder block because only the outside is going to be shown. So I just put little markings on the faces that were actually being seen. And I'm literally just going to hit those faces and that's it. And if you don't know which sides are the faces of the cinder blocks, just look for the ones with the eyes, ears, mouth, and nose and, and paint that one. Once the paint is dry, I'm gonna reassemble the bases and that is it. You are done with the base of your table. Now on to the table tops. I'm gonna to be using particle board here, not only because it's inexpensive, but also because it's very easy and forgiving to use. You don't even have to miter the sides because this particle board sands so easily that you could seamlessly just use butt joints to get it perfect. I ended up making both these tables around four inches wider uh, and longer on both sides. That way it can overhang the cinder blocks, creating a little more dimension to this table. Next up, I cut the sides of the table. I made them right around two inches and then cut them down to size. All right, all my parts are ready. Uh, let's assemble them up and make this table. Once everything's looking good on the dry fit, I go get my nailer. Uh, right here is an 18 gauge nailer. I'm using around one and a half inch nails. Throw some glue on there, nail them in. Simple as that, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Once all that's done, I'm just gonna get my orbital sander, sand everything down, make sure all the sides are flush, everything's good to go, and uh, get ready for routing. I'm gonna use a quarter inch roundover bit to round all the sides, and this will basically make it easier for the epoxy to drip over the sides and make some nice clean angles and sides. I don't have any wood filler on hand, so I'm gonna use this drywall compound. I'm just going to basically fill all the holes I left from the brad nailer, uh, make sure everything is smooth, there's no holes anywhere, so the epoxy won't seep into it. Then once that's dry, I'm just gonna clean up all the edges, um, just kind of sand it down to, to make it nice and smooth here. Once everything's all smooth, it's time for paint. I'm just gonna be using a white paint. I'm gonna roll it on. I would not recommend spray painting this because this particle board just soaks up spray paint, but if you brush it on, you're good to go. Here it is uh, finished and dry the next day. I have it raised and ready for epoxy. I actually use some soda cans and just a box to raise it with uh, some shims in it because the thing you wanna do most is make sure it's level. It has to be perfectly level on every single angle or the epoxy will drip off one side. So be very thorough and make sure every single angle is level. Now, if you're following me along step-by-step, step, do not do this, what I did here. I used a blue painter's tape and this tape did not work. The epoxy leaked right through it and did not hold anything. Um, so basically this all here is for nothing. What I wanted to do was hold all of this epoxy on the top of the table tops and then once the epoxy gets a little bit thicker you could take off the tape and it will run down the sides creating uh, what looks like a, a solid marble slab with the actual design rolling over the sides. What ended up happening is all of this just went off the table and I was left with 
basically dry spots and just not enough epoxy at all on the tops. Right here, this is about an hour later, and as you can see, it thinned out like crazy. The epoxy is just not enough on the table, and it's dripping out everywhere, causing a mess, and this is not how you want to do it. There was so much epoxy that dripped off these tables that it went down all of the plastic tarps all onto my garage floor, and this is going to be a nightmare to clean up. Here it is, a little closer up, you can see all those little bubbles. Those are actually dry spots on the table. So that is no epoxy on it. It just completely dried up because there was so little epoxy. All right, now here's the correct way to do it. I actually got this tape specifically made for resin and I will put a link to this in the description. Check it out, highly recommend it. This one worked great. I mixed up my next batch of resin, got all my pigments in there and I will show you a close-up of the colors that I use here shortly. This also reminds me I forgot to mention what kind of epoxy I'm using. I am using Moss Tabletop Epoxy. I highly recommend it. I love this stuff. I use all the resins and I think it is probably the best resin out there. I will put a link to this resin in the description. Now I'm going to be following the previous pores lines, so I kind of have a lot more white showing through. I'm just going to try and keep it consistent. Um, definitely torch it in between, get all those air bubbles popped. And then this time around I'm actually going to use a little brush and I'm going to kind of fan out the darker shades of epoxy. With that, also using the heat gun to kind of move it around, blow it around. And here it is, uh, probably about 20 minutes after it was done. And now it's time to pull off the tape and I'm gonna do a little movie magic here, speed this up like crazy and you'll see it drip down the sides. This is exactly what you want. Um, then I used a little brush to kind of help it come down the sides because once all the epoxy's on the sides, it's just a slicker surface for more to run down the side. Now the epoxy isn't really gonna run down the side. It actually doesn't have legs, so it's actually gonna be more of an ooze down the side. Oh, look at that ooze. That's some nice ooze. All right, this is the next day. Everything is cured. I have these little drips on the underside here that I'm just gonna shave off real quick by taking the sander to them. And once that is done, I'm gonna bring them on over to the cinder blocks. Now I did the first test fit off camera and it was a little too short for my liking. So what I did here is I added some two by fours to give it a little more height. I'm gonna just use some adhesive here and put on those two by fours. And then I'm gonna use some double-sided Gorilla Tape to put on top of the two by fours to attach the tabletop. And I don't wanna permanently glue these tabletops on because I wanna be able to move these if I need to. And as far as the two by fours go, they're actually gonna be completely hidden because remember I have that two inch sidewalls on the table. So this is all completely hidden and will not be seen. Just put it down. Just put it down. And time for the finishing shots. Hey, get out of the way, little lady. I'm doing finishing shots here. Beat it. Ah, that's more like it. All right, here it is, the finished tables. This was a fun project, super easy to do. Using these cinder blocks makes things so unbelievably simple. It's as simple as just painting them and stacking them. Uh, the tabletop was definitely a little bit of a learning experience, but I look forward to doing this again sometime soon. Hope you liked it. Subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you think. Bye.